Jeff dies friendship. Jeff dies friendship. Jeff dies friendship. Jeff dies friendship. Jeff die has friends. No, really, Jeff has friends. Jeff's friends are on this podcast. Jeff dies friendship. Jeff dies friendship. Jeff dies. Friendship. Hey, we're in, baby. Welcome back from the holiday season. I hope you had a new year and a great Christmas and all that stuff. Uh, we had episodes for you every week while we were while we were off recording, but now we're back, and uh, and we are very very excited for week forty one, episode forty one of the Jeff Dies Friendship Podcast, number forty one. Big shout out to Dirk Nowitzki, number forty one. I'm not a big fan of anyone from Dallas right now after the Seahawks lost, but listen, Dirk's definitely the most famous person ever wore 41. If you could think of an athlete that wore a 41 that's more famous than Dirk Nowitzki, message us. We'll, we'll, we'll do a formal apology. We'll apologize to you, but we just looked on the internet, and I think Dirk's the most famous. Sam Perkins wore 41 for a different team. He wore 14 for the Sonics. So we thought about giving a little shout-out to Sam Perkins, but we should have done that week 14, not week 41. Uh, yeah, so Dirk, if you're listening, yo, what's up, big dog? You're the best. Come be on the podcast. Uh, this week in the Fortress of Solid Dudes, week 41, we have Tony Hinchcliffe. Very funny stand-up comedian. If you've been to the comedy store, you've been around him or seen him or know of him. He is killing it in the last few years in this business, and it's an honor to have him in here. Uh, you might know him from Kill Tony. You might have heard him on Joe Rogan's podcast. Uh, maybe you've just seen his stand-up. Uh, maybe you've seen him in the roast battle. Maybe you've uh, watched his jokes be on the show. Uh, I think he was on the show Roast Battle, but even before that, he wrote for Jeffrey Ross on the roasts for a long time. And so, Anyways, we're happy to have him in. Enjoy the episode. We know you will. If you're not already a Patreon subscriber, dude, Go over to Patreon, backslash Jeff Die and, uh, and subscribe. You'll get free comedy tickets. You'll get to live stream with me. You get meet and greet, and you get to watch this very podcast. So check that out if you're not already. Otherwise, enjoy the episode. We'd love some comments, maybe some reviews, maybe some five stars, some subs on iTunes, whatever you got. Subs is hip-hop talk for subscriber. We love you. Enjoy the episode. And we're in. Just like that. Episode 41, Jeff Dice Friendship Podcast. Thanks for coming back, guys. Uh, that jingle was from uh, Joe. Thank you, Joe McKenzie. Uh, we appreciate the jingle. People always comment on it every week. We love it. Uh, Tony, how was your week, bud? It was good. Uh, it was good. Back back in uh, the fortress. Back in action, dude. Yeah, we're ready to go. What would you do for your holidays? Uh, it was good. I went you home. You don't drink. You don't do I don't, drugs. I don't. <laughs> what could possibly have happened? Uh, a lot of home-baked cookies from mom. Oh God! Mm. Oh wait, from it, mom. I think said for mom. No, no. I she, pictured you baking. She did the baking. Okay, fair enough. I did the eating. Yeah. Well, I'm very excited about this week. This mm-hmm. guest, I'm very excited about Tony Hinchcliffe in the house. Yes. Hey, hey, Dude, everybody! So <laughs> Been crushing it. <laughs> yeah. Been crushing it for the last what? Six years? Seven so, years? When Something did it like start? That. When did the heat start? The heat started maybe uh, maybe six or seven years ago. Yeah. Yeah. You've been crushing it. We're having fun. We're working hard. We're very lucky yeah, to get to do what work. we do. Yeah. 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 It's unbelievable. I can't believe it every time. Every weekend that I'm working, I can't believe it. Getting away with murder. Yeah. <laughs> with a pod or the uh, the touring, you do stand-up comedy, but then you also, you tour with Kill Tony. Yep. Do those merge? Do you do stand-up at night and then do the Kill Tony during oh, the day? Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. We do a lot of uh, a lot of two-furs and three-furs on a Saturday. Sometimes we'll do two stand-up shows and one Kill Tony or two Kill Tonys and one stand-up show, depending on how many times we've done whatever in that city. Do they ever book you for like, just do stand-up? That's what we want yeah. you here for. Yeah. And yeah. then they sometimes book you for just Kill Tony? That's it. Yeah. Nice. Sometimes, yeah. It's all nice. different and uh, it's crazy. I can't believe it. I love doing them both equally the same. Sometimes I wish... Every once in a while when I feel like I'm back in a city, maybe that I've been to a lot, like the bigger cities I do multiple times a year, it's like sometimes I wish it was just all Kill Tonys, you know, because it's like um, I'm always one of those guys that are paranoid that 
until I make another special, people are going to see the same joke twice. Oh, or if yeah, they yeah. saw me, that's it's like, every comedian's right. battle. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 uh it's fun though. I'm excited. You like know? every comedian has the idea of in their brain of like, oh well, if they hear this, they're going to know I'm a fraud. Yeah, because I did it last time I was here. <laughs> yeah. And then sometimes, and this is only half of the audience goes, we we thought you were going to do that thing from last time. We we told our friends about that thing, and you didn't do that thing. But like, if you do repeat a thing. Then yeah. some people will be like, well, I heard all this stuff last year. You're like, gosh, I don't know how to yeah. please. There's no way to do it. It yeah. goes both ways. You just got to hope that the smarter fans are the ones paying attention. And if they do hear the same things twice, at least this is how I rationalize it to myself. Only the smartest comedy fans will notice, right? And those people obviously already paid in some way to see me twice anyway. Sure, yeah, yeah. So if I just add a little something or segue out of something differently or segue yeah. into the next thing, then they're the smartest fans will be like, whoa, that got better. Right. That got stronger. And I see that flows right into that thing. Right. Like, it's like, I always just try to think yeah, as long as, as long as some of it's new, then they can yeah. go, Oh, well, I see this. You know, right. And I, and I, and I think that even, um, that can even be beneficial. One of the main bits that I've been working on for like, uh, for like 11 months now is uh 16 minutes and at one point it was nine minutes a long story it's oh, more of a story but it's like a it's like a jokey story and uh it's a very punched up story and that's the thing is like originally it was just this crazy story with a long setup because the big bangs come in at the end sure. but now it's just you know da, 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 yeah. right so and uh that's the one a lot that people will say, man, I saw you do that thing, Love you know, that. back at the comedy store or whatever in LA or when I was when I was in another city. And now it's crazy how that thing's yeah. grown. And Would it, you say you're more of a story guy or do you try no. to mix it all up? I try to mix it all up. The only reason why I have this crazy story is because I never got booked on Ari Shafir's storytelling show. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. It, and it bugged me. You're I'm like, like hey, I you. Know. here I am. <laughs> Tell a story. Stories are easy. Right? <laughs> yeah. That's how I That's always actually like, how I feel. Yeah. yeah. No, I don't want to say it, but. Right. I I one time Daniel Tosh said to me when I was like. It was like 2006 or something. It was a long time ago. And he's like, any asshole can get up there and tell a story. Yeah. He's like, my uncle tells stories that <laughs> yeah. are funny. He's like, no, but like writing material, like uh, creating something, that's what artists do. Yeah. And only because I liked him so much at the time that I was like, yeah. 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 And, and I walked around going, any asshole can tell a story, like just regurgitating. <laughs> well, that was my whole thing. Me. I agree with that completely until six or seven or eight years in or whatever, until Ari started doing mm -hmm. his show. And I was like, at that time, I was, you know, sort of, like you said, firing up, right? Things are right. starting. And I'm like, this is it. Ari has a show. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to tell a story on Comedy Central. It's a no brainer. It right. goes along with my brand sort of right with Ari, my pal, it's you know, Strip another Club? Rogan yeah. guy, He's a comedy right? store guy. He's yeah. A, yeah. Comedy store employee, former employee. And, uh, and I just kept not getting it. And I was busting his balls about it. Right. And I was busting Comedy Central's balls about it. My mind was blown. I'm like, I got stories. Well, why didn't they? Do you know why they didn't? I have no idea. Because to... they are, you know, and I'm not afraid to. Every network, including Comedy Central, they're all just star fuckers. They'll put people on that are like really successful who it's... don't have a good story. Right. And then like if, if someone's on that has like a fantastic story that you might not have heard of, that's because Ari was like, dude, this story is really good. Just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it, the network's like, well, well, nobody's heard of him. Like that's usually how networks run. Right. And I think they always looked at me as sort of like this underground, you know, edge lord or whatever. <laughs> and, uh, and it's like, you know, they're wrong, but it's okay. And the thing was, I really wanted to prove to Ari. I look at Ari as a big brother that I really look up to. Yeah, he's awesome. So it's like, I wanted to show him like, dude, you should have had See? me on your storytelling <laughs> yeah. show. Because now this thing is, the thing a is monster, fire yeah. because it is, you know, here's the flip side of the Tosh thing is I think when you do become a real comedian and you really work comedian beats and comedians muscles, and then you have this crazy story you that happened to you the story and you write it like a comedian, I yeah. think it's different than a normal storytelling 100%. comedian. It's got real beats in which you're like, I thought this, I can't believe he's going on. How is this <laughs> yeah, story yeah, still yeah. happening? That seems like that's the end of the story. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Seguro's mastered that. Yeah, he's a freak, man. He's yeah, because he'll talk about like some just crazy, and and Nate Bergetzi is also a monster that way, mm -hmm. where he can like tell some mundane thing that happened from like Little League, yeah, and it's like a thirteen minute thing that you're like, that is genius. Yeah, I would have never that could have happened in my actual life, and I wouldn't have thought to write out that bit. You yeah, know? but yeah. uh, how did you get started at the comedy store? 
Uh, I was one of those weird, like, uh, I was like a weird, like obsessed sort of historian. Okay. I, I came, you know, my original favorite thing was a combo of Jim Carrey on In Living Color and David Letterman's, you know, Late Show. Yeah. And uh, naturally and organically, I mean, really, the Jim Carrey stuff was super serious. I was obsessed. I mean, really? nothing brought me more joy than that. I was raised by a single mom. So I think you're naturally always looking at even at pro wrestling, a huge influence on me. Another really big one. But uh, the Jim Carrey thing was like, you know, it filled a freaking huge void in me. And I was obsessed with everything Jim Carrey. And I went with them, you know, the Ace Venturas, the this, the that. But when he made um, Man on the Moon, it was between I was in between eighth grade and my freshman year of high school. And that thing hit me like a ton of bricks, (laughs) man. I was at the library the next day trying to find every Andy Kaufman book. I was sitting there on the floor like a kid from a never ending story, just the blanket (laughs) and an apple, just trying to soak in all this information. I think if I was around when Andy Kaufman was doing comedy, I wouldn't have got it. I think they have convinced me he's a genius. And there's people that I, that no one else gets that I'm obsessed with, like Camp Jackie, uh, who actually, I would love to talk about that because he did Kill Tony, did that rap. And then uh, that was him. And then uh, how do you know that guy? Jeremiah Watkins came out and did that <laughs> yeah, note, man, yeah. which was fantastic. Um, that kid is the closest to an Andy Kaufman I will ever know in my life. Yeah. A pure genius. Wow. And he may never get acclaim. He may never get uh, he may never kill on stage. He may never yeah. anything. But I show everyone his Instagram. Yeah. I show I push it on everyone. I've known him forever. I knew him when he was like some punk kid that was just like sulking around in giant shoes and a big baggy shirt at Wise Guys Comedy Club in Utah. Yeah. And he is an actual genius. I and so when he did that rap thing, I was like, oh, this ought to be good. And it was just weird <laughs> as as I thought it would be. Yeah. And not well received, which I kind of was like, oh, <laughs> damn it, Jackie. Right. Uh, but then freaking Jeremiah just crushed it with that thing, which was mm-hmm. so funny. But mm-hmm. um, but yeah, I think Andy Kaufman for me, I'd have been like, mm, I And don't. again, just like Jim Carrey, Andy isn't even my real sense of humor either. I'm right. not really into like that silly, like crazy stuff. But it was sort of the darkness of that movie. And I think Jim Carrey's transition into a much darker character. Because, like, the cable guy to me was still silly. Like, right, people are right. like, that's Jim Carrey's dark movie. But to me, that's it's us. like, what yeah, are you yeah, talking yeah. about? Awesome. He's over the top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He paid a hooker to have sex with him. It's freaking awesome. But watching that movie, uh, Man on the Moon, I, I you know, I, first of all, in the beginning of that, I think one of the first scenes is uh, Andy at the improv uh, and then he's, there's no audience or whatever. And the, he gets off stage and the guy says, Andy, I don't think I'm going to be able to pay you anymore. And that's when I realized for the first time, again, I'm just coming out of eighth grade. It's yeah. that summer or whatever. I'm like, wait, what, how was he getting paid? What was he doing? <laughs> yeah, how yeah. was he getting, how do you make money doing that? Cause I'm in Youngstown, Ohio. <laughs> yeah. I'm told you're either an engineer or a doctor. Or you work in a factory. That's it. Those are like your options. That's right. it. Maybe a lawyer, heart surgeon, <laughs> yeah. different types of lawyer. <laughs> yeah. Right. You go to school and then yeah, you get that. That's yeah. it. Yeah. So I'm literally like, what, how, how is he, how was he getting paid? Like, I I didn't understand that there was two drink minimums or that they, the club, you know, sometimes would have rough weeks and book other people. I just didn't understand the system at all. But I was so intrigued from that scene on. And then, you know, the darkness of it, the fact that Andy, you know, was this guy that like would like sort of F you to the network or to whatever, whoever was giving him notes, like he's just a boss. And that really intrigued me that people wanted to be around this guy because he could be funny. You know, he had this power and it, and it was a game changer. So anyway, yeah. And the more research, you, you know, I did on that and the fact that he fake like they made it look like he faked his death yeah. or whatever as a kid. I'm like, that was so the cool. first fake death I had ever seen. So I'm like, <laughs> yeah. this is the coolest thing ever. Is he still alive? I think he's still alive. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, uh, but well, just before you move on, were you like funny in school? Yeah. Yeah. You were like the class clown guy. Yeah. I was getting in trouble all the time. I was under contracts. And if I mess up one more time, I'm expelled the whole thing all the way. I may, and I, maybe I'm uh, biased because I was that kid, Mm -hmm. but I always say like, that's how, you know, comedians that like, they always go, Oh, you get your stripes by doing triple runs or everyone's got their own little bull crap of how you get your stripes. Oh, you get your stripes by doing, you know, uh, 
the yuck yucks runs up into the Canada and blah, 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 or like going to enough open mics. That's, I think being a class clown in school, that's how you get like your stripes. No doubt. You learn how to work a room who has generally no interest in supporting what you're saying. <laughs> right. Talk about a tough crowd. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And, uh, and the teacher is going to punish you because yep. she doesn't want to compete with you. She, or he or she doesn't want to compete with you. And so like, that's fascinating. So I love that you were the, the class clown guy. Yeah. And the more research I did on the Andy Kaufman stuff and the Jim Carrey stuff and the David Letterman stuff, it created this tornado that all led back to this magical building in West Hollywood. Yeah. And, uh, I, you know, I moved out here. My brother already lived here. So he was cool. like working jobs as like a bartender and whatnot. Was it easy a lot older than you? Yeah, he's 12 years older 12 than years, me. Okay. Yep. So I crashed on his couch. And it's perfect. And got into the game. I mean, it was just, I was so intimidated to go there for the first time ever to start stand-up comedy. It was my first comedy club I ever went to. Wow. I wow. signed up that night. I got up that night and uh You know, when fun. people think of the comedy store, just to give you some context, because I imagine you only know life from your perspective, but... Mm -hmm. When people think of the comedy store, they think of you in a lot of ways. Like, pe like people always go, oh, I was there. And you're always in the one of the top four names I hear. People go, oh, we <clears> saw, <throat> and the, you know, the usual suspects like, oh, we, Rogan was there, Chappelle. But then y your name almost always pops up in that like four or five. Almost it's, always. It's crazy, you know. It's one of those things where I think I learned how to sort of stand out in that in the sort of going up after beasts because it's sure. just what I did every night. And uh and that's always my goal is like when people when I see another comedian walking around like, oh, man, I'm like, what's wrong? They're like, I don't like my spot. It's so late. There's not going to be barely yeah. anybody here. You get I, to go on stage at the comedy store. That's yeah. what you should be thinking. I, I tell them and it's really I say it this way. The last couple of years, it became very clear to me, which is like we have the opportunity to steal the show. Yeah. Anybody that's there, you have a chance, even though they saw, you know, whoever you have a chance that when they wake up the next morning and they're like, what did I do last night? Oh, the comedy store. You could be the first person that they think of. Right. Like that lineup for that night is one thing, but what's the lineup of what people are thinking about the next day of what they saw? And if you come in with some, you know, a little bit of, you know, balls, then they feel that. Absolutely. Last yeah. night, literally last night at the Laugh Factory, three the, the three comments that went up before me all told the audience they're going to do new material and put the notebook on the stage or on mm. the stool. And they didn't have to be bombed or anything, but you could tell from their uh, like kind of posture and you could tell by their delivery mm. and even how they would bail on jokes or afterwards be like, no, that's okay. I think the first part needs work. It's like they're workshopping it with people who didn't pay to see comedy. And I was literally in the back. I was teasing them like uh to the cute girl that was like working the laugh factory but i and they're my friends and i love them and they all they all were fine but i stole the show just because i had already d knew right. what i was going to do yeah i was like no I was, on the drive here i was thinking like we'll open with this we'll do with this i'll close strong with that mm -hmm. if i have a little more time i'll push this in between and it, I wasn't, I'm not better than them. I just was more prepared. It was right. so fascinating. Yeah. And everyone's like, oh, that's a professional. You're like, no, they're all professionals. We're all professionals. Right. These guys just chose tonight to be like a lazy right. sweatpants Monday, which I thought was fascinating. <laughs> yeah, it's such a, it's such a, I think it's such a cop out working out new material that way too. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, it's like, if, if you can't memorize it, yeah. then it's probably not that great. Like if you're not that excited, excited about to it, do yeah. it, if you can't wait to hit that line and then, ooh, that line comes right. after that. And then that beat, man, that's three in a row, bing, bang, exactly. boom. And then we could move right on to this next thing. Like if you don't have it there, then it's probably garbage. Right? Well, I also I mean, feel like I'm trying to trick them. Like I don't want the audience to know if it's new or right. if it's old. Right. Sometimes I'll do bits that I've been doing for like a decade, mm -hmm. but I'm like, you know, they don't know that I've been yeah, saying this. Right. I've never seen any of these people. They, yeah. Most of them have never seen me. So they're not going to know. I don't have to go, oh, this is old. Like, no, yeah. I'm just going to surprise them. And if it's brand new, I want to surprise them. It's weird. My biggest pet peeve is the there's a few <laughs> there's a few big comedians that walk around with notebooks and like scrumpled up paper. Oh, yeah. but, and then they do the thing that they do the same set that they've always oh, yeah. done every like, time. What you is see on them? that paper? <laughs> 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 what what grocery shopping list yeah. are you yeah. carrying around with you pretending like you're writing new jokes? It's part of their yeah. comedy costume. Like, yeah. look, I uh, look at all this. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, I see that a lot. And they're trying to fool the crowd into thinking that they're working out new material. It, it might be the sickest thing in all of comedy. Absolutely. People are like, hey, is, you know, is this ruining comedy? Is that ruining comedy? There's a few things that could ruin comedy. <laughs> yeah, that That's idea. one of them. Yeah, exactly. Is people pretending they see that person again. If they see that person again, I'm not buying any of it. No. Now I think everybody's a fraud. Exactly. Right? If I see that guy pretending like he's working out new stuff, do that set. I'm like, I had so much fun at the comedy store, you know. A couple of weeks ago, I'm going to go back. I see that same guy. With same it, papers. With it, with it. Yeah, same <laughs> yeah. papers. A little more crumpled up, right? He wants it to look different. You know, they probably pour coffee on it. They want, <laughs> yeah, they want yeah. to age the papers. No, this is brand new. <laughs> All right, yeah, yeah. it's authentic. Uh, and if I saw that twice, I'd be like, God damn it, man. There oh, are my. some guys at the store, which I obviously will not name, but they have done the same act. It's unbelievable. Over and over. <laughs> and even my dumb friends. I have a lot of dumb yeah. friends, Tony. And, yeah. th- and they'll go... I see that guy. He does the same thing every time. And I was like, if th- if this friend put it together, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> lots of people are putting it right. together. That there's it- a couple of them that are, there's, in fact, really, there's only, I think, one that's so good at it that it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. There's one. I think we all know who it is. And he's hilarious and adorable and super likable. And he hits the gas and it gets me every time. Oh, really? Right. Uh, but. Or the rest of them, it's yeah. the most frightening thing in the world. it's not just the store. It's every comedy club yeah. has that for sure. You know, one time when I first started working at the comedy store, this is how crazy things have gone in the past 12 years. When I got the job, when I started there, I got a job almost like a month later. And I was a phone guy during the day. And what they had in the phones room was a VCR and one of those old TVs. And it was, that's what we had. Like they, they had a computer sort of, it was more like a word processor. Like Mm -hmm. there wasn't really the internet, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, there's also a little cabinet with a few VHS tapes. So sure enough. I mean, by the way, even though that was the only way for them to pre-sell tickets, because they didn't have a website then, uh, there wasn't a lot of phone calls coming in. Right. 2007 Comedy Store was dead as a door now, yeah. but I was so happy to have this job. <laughs> right. I couldn't believe yeah. it. Even if Jim nothing Carrey else was, happened, yeah. the history is phenomenal. Even if it ended there, I would have been right. happy because I'm like, this is the same. I have the same job that Jim Carrey yeah. had. Same he worked paint. the phones. <laughs> the, yeah. everything, no furniture's changed. No, no doubt. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, the yeah. desk literally had like all the etchings, like an yeah. old wooden desk. It yeah. was crazy. There's things in this house that are going to change. In the next month, you know, but like not the comedy store. The comedy store, every part of it is the same. Yeah, so I was obsessed. I was just the happiest camper. And so I'm sitting there one day and I'm like, ah, I'm, going, I'm kind of bored. Let's see what VHS tapes are here. And then I find the the comedy store 15th anniversary tape. 15. Yeah, exactly. So that's what they started in 72, 82, 87, right? And I put, pop it in and there's one comedian I won't say his name, I guess, even though it doesn't really matter because he's like, I don't even think he's still doing it. He works at Whole Foods or something. Right. (laughs) (laughs) But uh, but I had seen him, you know, multiple weeks, you know, big Saturday night main room guy, older, much older comic. And he was a killer, man. And I noticed that he was doing the same set a couple times. You know, pretty much the same set on those Saturday nights in the main room. And I pop in this VHS tape and it's when I realized my biggest fear, right? It's when I realized it is I'm watching this guy in 87 and beat for beat. I cannot believe (laughs) it. Makes me so gross. Oh, it was. It was. But it was also a great life changing career changing sort of moment right. for me where I'm like, whoa, now I know my biggest fear. Yeah. My biggest fear is that it's That's not failing. Lesson. It's not getting sick or quitting or having some crazy accident yeah. happen to me. It's that it's being that guy that maybe one day, 30 years from now, some kid's going to be like, I love this place. I love comedy. Ooh, this guy's a real comedy guy. Right. Oh no. Like, it's <laughs> like yeah. We talked about it in the car today that you can learn some valuable lessons. Like just follow a poor person mm-hmm. and then tomorrow, and then tomorrow, do the opposite of whatever they did. Yeah. Find out what people you hate are reading and don't read it. Yeah. Like that is a good lesson. Like, Oh, I got to see this. I don't want to be that guy. I don't want this moment to ever happen for some young kid that looks up to Tony Hinchcliffe who might later be working (laughs) at the, yeah. Right. Yeah, it's fascinating. It's crazy to me to see that. Yeah, so so what was his name? (laughs) (laughs) Those headshots, what's the deal with the store headshots? How do those work? I'll tell you how they work because I don't have one up there. You don't? They make you bring your own headshot. That's easy. 
Yeah, but I refuse to do it. You won't do I'm it. Like, you're going to put me on your wall, but I have to bring it? Like, it's like, come on. Oh, I got a great story for you. Yeah. When I first moved to um, L.A., uh, I, w- I just was going to anywhere that would put me up. But I wasn't allowed to be telling anyone that I was on Last Comic Standing. So it was supposed to be like this secret... But I do want spots. And if they knew that, they'd put me up. So I'm like, I told like, hey, I'm on Last Comic Standing. I'm not supposed to say anything. And so then they're like, yeah, go on. We can put you on spots, whatever. One of the places I was going to was the Ha Ha. I didn't know what it was. Like, you know, I just, I thought all comedy clubs were the same or whatever. So I go to the Ha Ha. And uh, Jack, the owner, is a very notoriously famous guy around here, the owner. And uh, he goes, he, he points to a poster of Gabriel Iglesias. It's like the size of this wall. It's huge. It's on the front of the ha-ha, or it was at the time. And he goes, see that? That could be you. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, thanks, Jack. That's really nice. It's like, yeah, maybe someday, you know, I hope to be as famous as him. He's great. He goes, no, no, that could be you. And I go, yeah, thank you. Like, that's very nice. I love Gabe, whatever. And he goes, no, you bring me a poster. I'll take that out. I'll put you in. <laughs> if I make my own <laughs> wall-sized poster, he would hang it up in place of... Because I guess Gabriel stopped coming to the ha and broke his heart or whatever. So he yeah. like just wanted me to bring a poster How of myself. How many people do you think he asked that week? I don't know, but <laughs> like, like, who would do be you? Bring your fat head to me. <laughs> yeah. Go make fat head of you. Bring it to me. I don't even know how you would make a poster that big. Like, uh, I played him going to invest all the money I had in my right. bank account at that time. But, yeah, that's got to uh, be a two or three hundred dollar excursion <laughs> to go to work. some print shop. And yeah. be like, Can you make this a giant adhesive of right. me? <laughs> it's so weird. And also, like, why would I pick the ha? Like, it's such a strange, like, in North Hollywood, people are like, that's right. the, like, yeah. Latino cafe. And yeah. like, kind of, like yeah. Jeff dies in the front of that? It doesn't make any yeah. sense. Yeah, you're uh, probably better so off just weird. putting it on a random electric box where there's actual traffic <laughs> Anywhere, or something yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, wait, so what year did you move to LA? Uh, I moved here in like, uh, I think 2006. Oh my God. Yeah. And you pursued comedy right away. I actually took a little stoner vacation. Like I really hung out with my brother a lot. I uh, worked in restaurants and uh, I umpired Little League baseball That's games, fun. which was oh, wow. something I did back in Youngstown. I love it. A lot of pressure in it. A lot of pressure. Oh my God. <laughs> I umpired fun. one game mm-hmm. ever for Little League. Mm-hmm. And just those parents, I could feel the pressure coming off the parents <laughs> on both sides. Also, like that play at first base, like I guess I'm not as good as right. I thought yeah. I would be at that. It's very hard. Oh, it's so hard. It's very hard. Yeah, like like because I'm watching the, I'm listening for it, but yeah. like I don't know, just the timing. But if you of don't that. hear it, it's. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's just you gotta like, watch the bag, but listen for the the glove. And I made a bad call, like because it was my first time ever umpiring. It was like the World <laughs> Series game for them. Yeah. And the only reason I got the job is because Why one of the throwing you into the deep end like that. Yeah. Because the coach on one of the teams owned giggles comedy club and i was like uh, his like star you know comedian at the time and he's like i need we need umpires but he's doing that because he's daddy you know like he yeah. was like my boss <laughs> right. like he was like the person that i my whole career hung on at that point so i made a bad call that helped his team the pl- that the parents on that side like lost their mind and then i had to just like own it like no nope, that's the call i'm the ump but that's right you gotta and that was back in seattle yeah a long time ago well what's crazy is my friend is what i learned is and i thought where I was from in Youngstown, Ohio, was very competitive, very sport heavy, and it is. But then I got out here and I realized the parents are literally Wait, one million times worse. Entitled. I could not believe it. Even They're not, rich people aren't used to being told no. Right. They're not used, they don't know ball strike, fair, foul, out, safe. No, it's safe. It's a strike if it's yeah. a kid pitching yeah. and it's yeah. an out. Yeah, yeah. It's just, no, exactly. I had to eject so many people. Really? I had to throw nice. them That's out fun, of the ball. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't get to yeah. do that. Managers, same thing. The team managers were no better. All, <laughs> I mean, they're just <laughs> trouble starters. In I Little mean, League. Oh, my goodness. It was you out of control. Throw people out. What, age so were, what age were the kids? Anywhere from like, uh, I think I did like 11, 12, 13, 14. Some, yep, some 15, 16s, yeah, all you know in there. what's great, though, is like, so you're obviously, even right now, you're younger than every parent that's mm-hmm. at a Little League game. Mm-hmm. And this was a while back when yeah. you were much younger. Throwing out an adult <laughs> yeah. of a thing. Because you're not a cop. <laughs> right? You're yeah. just an umpire. Right. So you're like, you're out of here. And they're like, I'm not going anywhere. Like, what would I do? I wouldn't oh, even they know. they go. Because then you say, if you don't leave, if you don't leave the field, they're going to win the game. Oh, there yeah. it is. Oh, they go, dude. They <laughs> yeah. real quick. They're like, oh, all I have to do is leave. Okay, yeah. they get to keep okay, playing. Okay, he was okay. out. He was yeah. out. Right, yeah, yeah. 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 You know, the craziest thing, and it's funny this has come up because I just realized this a few days ago, was that, you know, this was in Burbank. So I was 
you know, and I did it a couple years. I was a Burbank Little League umpire. God, so so cool. eventually I realized one of these nights or it's already happened, there's going to be a parent or a coach in that audience watching oh, yeah. this amazing show, right? And then- How do I know that guy? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, how yeah. do I? I can't put my oh, finger yeah. on it. They'll never guess, right? Never, They'll yeah. never- Have you ever <laughs> thought about doing material about it? I mean, there must've been so many funny things that happened. Maybe eventually down the road. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, some, you're probably going to have- kids that knew you as the umpire like coming yeah. to the shows and are you know their girlfriends and freaking yeah. sisters that might have been at those games there's one kid that i'm afraid of oh, no uh, yeah, what yeah. Happened? <laughs> so this was actually one summer uh my brother and i picked up shifts as football referees oh uh, that's the worst now do we you got know those good- rules good yeah i mean yeah i, I know couldn't the do rules. that i did it in college i did intramurals which is bad because all these frat boys oh, yeah, just want to, but I love, same thing. You can flag them and. Well, anyway. here's the catch with you football. You ever seen Quantum Leap? You know that show? Yeah. yeah. There's one where he like jumps into the body of a ref and I'd be like, oh, I'd be doomed. I wouldn't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, the catch with, uh, with football is that in baseball, you're behind home plate. Right. right. You're next to first base. Or if you're doing the bases, you're behind the pitcher's mound. You're within, you know, I don't know, 20, 30 feet of first, second, third home, whatever. In football, if you're the referee and there's, you know, maybe say at most two referees for a Little League football game, uh, there's no one deep. So if the quarterback, if you're on the line making sure nobody's offsides or whatever, and the quarterback drops back and throws a bomb to the end zone deep and say someone's (laughs) running and puts up their hands and drags their feet, but you're, you know, 60 (laughs) feet away, you don't see the line at all, you're like, no catch <laughs> yeah. out of bounds. Yeah. You do all these hand signals yeah. to try to convince to seem people. Really, yeah. really right. like you know what you're doing. So check this out. So one time that happens, of course it happens, right? And I go, no catch out of bounds. And this kid gets up. I mean, he's a little kid too. He's right. like that big. <laughs> he's like, ref, you're out of line. I was in bounds. I did everything I had to do. I dragged my feet. I caught that ball full possession. I'm like. Yeah, I'm like, get get back to the sideline, kid. Yeah, don't right. talk back to right. me. Whatever, exactly. <laughs> a couple weeks later, right? I'm doing another one of these football games, and I swear to God, it's the same team. I'm already dreading it, right? <laughs> this kid comes like, up oh, to no, me. They're blue. Nope, yep, it's yeah, them. Yeah. It's them. It's the, the Predators it's the, again. Yeah, exactly, right. exactly. The aqua and purple team, yeah. right? Yeah. And the kid comes up to me. I'm oh, not no. kidding you. He goes, he goes, Mr. Referee, sir, like something like that. Like he's being overly polite. And I'm like, yes, kid. You're right. And it's like, I swear to God, he shows me a framed. It's now framed. It is framed. This is amazing. A picture of him fully extended ball in hands like the feet in bounds. I swear to God, I don't know where this photographer was, but he was there and he must have. Oops, yeah, yeah. This pick just <laughs> as this <Perfectly>. kid. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I love this kid. Well, this kid is a legend. That's a, a baller move. Un- he should have also, the- Mr. Gentleman, like referee, sir. Yes, yeah. perfect. <laughs> Legendary, <laughs> perfect. Yeah. right? Yeah, and that's why Not, I'm afraid. Oh, hey, there you are, ref. No, he, yeah. he's like, that's slow why up. I'm afraid of this kid. Is best- that was him when he was 10 or 11. Like, oh, yeah, when he sees me or makes the yeah. connection, he's if it ever Elon happens, Musk now. yeah, the baller yeah. move <laughs> would have been to sign it and give it to you. Like, uh, there you go, hang that on your wall. And it's funny because naturally, as a referee, by the way, you can never admit you can right, never right. give in so i literally go huh i don't know when that picture's from kid <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which must be driving him insane like what right. <laughs> i had my mom and dad frame this yeah. i got this frame this is man. my one catch all season Are you insane? <laughs> just give me this <laughs> it was and i remember specifically he was the coach's son the coach oh, was geez. mad he was mad yeah. like it was a whole thing you could tell it was the dad's idea right oh, too yeah. like not only are we gonna blow this picture up we're gonna Frame it. <laughs> yeah, we're yeah, gonna sure. frame it. Do you think uh, it was maybe a still from like videotape? Like if it was videotaped and then he paused it and then uh, been and then very, framed yeah, that exact been. frame. Yep. Oh gosh, what a dick! Like how much time do you have? <laughs> but I also can't <laughs> yeah. believe that the camera guy was in that end zone. You oh, know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like it was right on top of it. I couldn't <laughs> believe how that kid is. Like, where'd you guys get a sky is. cam? It's for this unreal. <laughs> right? What a it's legend! Like, I love have, him. They have Belichick filming their games. 
<laughs> oh, that's so good. True I like that he likes sports too. A lot of comics sometimes. I feel like a lot of comics that I bond with like sports. And there's a bunch of comics, especially like Delia. Like I love Delia, but he'll always be like 75 tweets a day about how much he hates sports. Right. Like we get it. Why yeah. are you finding so much identity in things you hate? <laughs> right. It's insane. Or like so many female comics. Like uh, a lot of female comics are like, ah, I don't I go basketball uh, end zone. Or like they'll intentionally right. mispronounce like, sports yeah. terms. Uh, Morgan Murphy is a good example of a chick who seems like she'd hate sports and she loves sports loves and it. that that's, makes me like her like that's she's, one of the main places where i go to actually watch sports oh, really? yeah she uh she's unbelievable like yeah, I, I, I watched her. a bunch of football games there uh, i watched uh the triple g fight against canelo there doesn't mm. she seem like a girl who would be on the bad news bears like oh, like when man. she was a little girl like just with the cigarette and the like man i'll hit a she home seems run. like she'd be on bad news bears and a league of their own <laughs> they should redo <laughs> bad news bears and she'll be the coach like that would be a great i love that oh uh, it'd be amazing well so i want to i wanted to address we had a big flare-up one time yeah and i want to talk about it on here yeah um First of all, it was, no, I won't say that. Um, to give people context, I saw you at the improv mm -hmm. and you were doing a set. Mm -hmm. And out of nowhere, in very un Jeff Dye fashion, <laughs> like if you ask anyone who knows me, anyone who's been around me, like this is such an un Jeff Dye move. And to my, I still to this day have no idea what made me do it. But I just tweeted about how arrogant you're set. I tagged mm -hmm. you in it, I think. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right? Uh, I think so. Yeah, so that's me going, yeah, I wanted to see this. I don't care. Like, uh, this weird flare-up of pride. Yeah. Called you arrogant and said mm -hmm. it was a gross display of arrogance, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And then I tweeted it, and the next day, oh, I just got murdered. Like, just, like, <laughs> buried in Death Squad. People being like, yeah. who the fuck's the like, just, oh, it? Just, yeah. That's not why I regret it. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that happened, for sure, for <laughs> days. Um, but then, like, the regret I feel about that, because I didn't know... Uh, how nice you like you're a great guy yeah. and like a really nice guy and I yeah. remember like thinking even like weeks later like fuck I really like that guy and we have a lot in common and he's yeah. very funny and he's very talented uh, the only bad part of the whole thing uh, so I regret that and I'm sorry because I feel like we would have been great friends right, of if course. I just hadn't have done yeah, that no. really it's all good. misrepresenting of myself at right. the time. And um, I'm sorry I went to uh, DEF CON 5 huh? immediately and was like, everybody make fun of this guy. <laughs> no, but I think that that's great. I think right. that's the way to handle yeah, yeah, that for yeah. sure. Like, well, go ahead. So <laughs> yeah. It's like I break in your yard. The dog's going to bite. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the only part of that that I really mem remember being like, well, that's wrong. Or not wrong, but that's like a weird thing that happened. Like a weird, like... Uh -huh. uh, kind of symptom of what happened was that Joe like tried to, like on Joe Rogan's podcast, tried to like sum it up. And I was like, well, he doesn't even know me or like the situation or what happened. Cause Joe's like, that's just insecurity, man. It's like some comics they'll just do it. And I was like, no, no, that's not, I was just being, mm -hmm. I guess it was insecurity, but like the, I felt it was weird that he was trying to like sum it up. I don't remember that. I was on his podcast. No. Oh yeah. Maybe you were S something happened. Cause I got like 20, text messages like joe rogan's talking about you on his podcast i was oh, like oh god i don't even remember <laughs> Let's that see part. what happened what i remember a... that day though like i remember what happened i remember that uh, that was when i was writing on one of the comedy central rows yeah. and and at that time especially i wasn't really i wasn't really used to you know running that full of a schedule with the pressure new pressures and sort of like i was you know whatever yeah and uh it was a long day for me and I remember that crowd and that set or whatever, maybe, yeah. maybe, you know, one of the things that sort of messes me up sometimes is if there's a comedian that I think is, uh, perhaps hacky or bad, if they go on before me and I see the crowd dying, you're like, I don't want to impress these right, people. It's going to be the worst <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, that, yeah. that immediately tells me that I'm not going to have any fun because even if they do laugh, they laughed at that bozo, made this right? Guy laugh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was one of those nights at the Hollywood Improv where that happens, yeah. you know. And again, and I'm, you know, even I'm, I, I'll always consider myself, yeah, you know what I mean? Like I'm a comedy store guy, I worked my right. way up as an employee. So naturally, I think there's a little bit of that too, where it's like, screw this place, right. a little bit. And it was just a perfect storm of that, that, a long work day. And I remember 
specifically me being like, you guys don't even matter to yeah, me, right? I remember you saying like, if if I'm, this doesn't go well, it doesn't matter because I did television today. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, and, I wrote, I, I, you know, that, and I'm excited about that job at the time. And I genuinely cool. am it's against great. that crowd, right? And I'm like, you know, I remember being like, you know, it's the most watched comedy program of the year. You think I care if you schlubs that got free tickets tonight? They laughed you at the ventriloquist a second ago. <laughs> and it was also something that I've shaken since then, which was I used to be good at, you know, meltdowns. Like, it's like I used to think that was entertaining. It was watching a comedian go completely out of the pocket sure. and be like, Fuck, you know, fuck right, this, yeah. fuck you, fuck everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, it was certainly part of my you know, repertoire back then. I didn't care. I didn't see the beauty in staying in the pocket and not letting the audience decide. Right. That took me, I mean, I didn't learn that until, you know, I couldn't teach myself that skill set until years ago, like just more recently, four or five years ago, really. And, um, because before I was just like, I was just so into crowd work and just sort of, I didn't see the beauty in, owning it and standing in one spot and sometimes keeping the mic in the mic stand and not doing sure. anything sometimes not even lifting my arm for anything sometimes <laughs> not even going like this or like right. about you know what i mean like yeah. nothing i i think that sometimes that's the most powerful stuff like it's like you know so it was just a perfect storm that yeah. night and uh i think it was my own ego too i've thought about it a zillion times i've thought yeah. about this since it happened so many times as like oh that was a regret I, I regret doing that. The funny part was to me was the next day when all of that was happening, I wasn't focusing on the job at all. Like I was back in that writer's room and I'm now I'm just like reading all the comments that people are saying, <laughs> thinking if I'm going to say another thing, yeah, yeah, yeah. all of a sudden what I went from bragging about, like uh, now I'm just out of it. Now, yeah. Right. <laughs> well, I do remember it was my own ego. And I think what happened is that I thought I do TV. Right. And I don't. So it was like, it was just a total ego moment yeah. for me yeah. and then within seconds and i think i learned also like which a lot of comics aren't learning now mm-hmm. like roseanne like you know the, yeah. like what your fingers can do in a moment of like oh i'm being clever or i'm right about this right can change lots of things mm-hmm. and for me luckily we're here right now and it, it was over pre- almost as quick as it started but what a what a waste of time for yeah. no reason at all. Like yeah. I did, it did I didn't need to tweet that. That didn't have to happen. It's not yeah. my goddamn business how people want to do their set if yeah. I don't know, you know. So I regret it. I love you, buddy. I'm so happy you came yeah, here. Yeah, I love you too. This yeah. is fun. That's what makes it exciting. Is sometimes, you know, relationships start off some of the best friends start off weird yeah, yeah. you know it's one of those it's things so well, that's what i love about comedy man we're like a fraternity like all yeah. the comics there's certain ones i'm not crazy about but for the most part like we all stick together and have each other's back and you're not a comic so me and tony can <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm <laughs> just kidding uh anything you want to plug man where can people find you uh i have a big crazy live podcast that i do every monday out of the comedy store called kill tony i gotta get you in there yeah as a guest if you haven't sometime. heard of it it is phenomenal we're having a lot of fun. We just filled up the main room again last night. We're doing it every Monday at 8 With, at the Comedy uh, Store. With Doug Benson and I think yep. the Sklar brothers. Right? Yep, Randy yeah. Sklar. And we're, we do that on the road. We do Kill Tony on the road, which is even more fun than the one in L.A. Because we get really, like, you know, interesting personalities up there pulled out of the bucket to do 60 seconds of stand up. And this week we're going to uh, Raleigh. We're doing a Kill Tony nice. there. And I'm Improv doing stand up the there. The Good Nights. The Good Nights. Nice. The uh, helium and, um and then uh, next month, we're going to Dublin, Ireland, Manchester, England, London, England. Good I'm night. doing uh, six nights of stand-up in London. And, uh, 2019, coming in hot. Yeah, <laughs> I'm excited great. about it. Yeah, and a lot of other fun stuff. I'm basically going everywhere. <laughs> Philly, everywhere. 2019, TonyHinchcliffe.com. Everywhere you'd want to go. None of yeah. the cities that sometimes we have. Right. Well, yeah, we're going to see. El Paso. <laughs> yeah. No, I thought you El Paso. Yeah, I think, uh, you like El Paso? There's the hyenas there, isn't there? I don't <laughs> no, know. I don't think so. No, that's, where's El Paso? <laughs> Texas? El Paso's the weird one. It's like Far East. It's oh, like, yeah. yeah they're not, he's not coming to El Paso. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a very shady <laughs> city. Yes, on the on the city because yeah, yeah he's, he's definitely not going to help us. <laughs> yeah. um, and what's your Twitter just so they can Tony Hinchcliffe find all di- one word H Easy. plus inch Cliff plus E Tony Hinchcliffe love it T dog you know where to find me they know they know and also know. we got a big announcement coming up soon, soon. for him Hopefully. video game style we got to get Tony on that oh yeah yeah uh, we love you guys thanks for listening don't forget to uh, you know shoot us a subscribe give us a comment um, yeah we love you guys peace friendship how about that. 
What a great episode. Such a good episode. I'm winded. I'm winded from it. That's how good the episode was. What a treat. Um, yeah, follow Tony Hinchcliffe. Go see what he's up to. Go to the comedy store. Support this guy's career. I love him to death. Uh, yeah, and also support us by going over to patreon.com backslash Jeff Die. Subscribe. Uh, you know, you're going to get a lot of goodies. Also, next week, we got a really fun episode for you. So catch us back here next week. We love you. Peace.